I'm the, I'm the only person in Biscay. The yacht I was with, I don't know what happened to them, they've gone off somewhere. Uh, we've got dolphins, which I just, you've just seen one. Yesterday we had, I think they were pilot whales. Uh, one of them which went under the boat. Straight under the boat. Oh my God. He's huge. That went straight under the boat. <laughs> Every day praying for some decent weather, some proper sailing weather, and I think we finally got it. The wind is not quite as strong as it could be, so I haven't. Uh, I think I'm doing about three and a half knots, which is okay. It's fine. Uh, the thing is, the sea's reasonably smooth. It has been very lumpy up until now, uh, which hasn't made me feel very well. This is looking good. I had to show you this. She's doing over six knots. Uh, yeah, lovely. That's what it's all about. Just get, <laughs> getting somewhere. This is better than what we've been doing. Um, we're heading slightly in the wrong direction. I've actually got a drop to 5.9 now. Um, we're, we're heading too far out. Um, France is the end of the peninsula in France. And the Bay of Biscay comes around here, ends somewhere over there, about 200 miles that way. We're actually heading too far out to work the sea. Uh, but I've got the wind and I've got the speed. There she is, 6.2. So I'm just northern a little bit, but I'm going to have to come back, otherwise I'm going to end up too far out to sea and have to work my way back in again. Just slip down the sea here. Yeah, this is great. This is great. We've had, uh, oh well, it's, it's been a good good day today. So if I look at that North that Atlantic swell over there. There we go. It's hard to, to see on the camera. The camera tends to flatten it, the whole sort of 3D effect. But yeah, we're riding up and down some nice Atlantic swell big rolling swell, which is nice. Got the robes on today, it's getting cold. Sailing, of course, from the Algarve up to uh, Britain. A big change in the temperature. Also, we're going fast today, uh, and it's very windy on deck, and I'm very cold. So it's 6.5 knots at the moment. It's slightly the wrong direction, I'll have to come across in a minute. Um, the last two days, we've been at sea for three days now since we left Spain. Uh, uh, yesterday was a bit of a disaster. There was no wind and then it was too rough. I lay, I lay a hole for a while, I mean I just literally stopped the boat and went below and made tea and tried to decide what to do. Um, luckily a breeze came up just enough to so get the autopilot working and uh, I managed to get two and a half knots with the boat overnight. Um, and then I stopped the boat for a while and had a, I managed to get uh, a few hours sleep. I found a very quiet area of uh, um, where there's no traffic uh, in, in the Bay of Biscay there and uh, managed to get some sleep and I needed it. I hadn't slept for a long time and I really needed to sleep. So I'm feeling much fresher today. I was feeling ill as well the last two days. I'm feeling fine today, apart from nearly breaking a toe. I got a toe on my foot I've broken twice before on boats and I got it caught uh, and, um, and a piece of deck gear here. Deck gear here. <laughs> it hurt me like hell. Anyway, so I'm hobbling about on that. Uh, apart from that, yeah, it's good. Uh, today's brilliant. It started off with no wind at all. Got up, had a nice breakfast. Uh, as you saw, yeah, my, my breakfast in a can. Thank you to Northern Rum for that. Uh, and then um, away, the wind picked up uh, big time. So we've got all the sail up and uh, she's looking pretty. Look at that, hey? That's, that's a sailboat for you. I can travel for free. Don't pay no diesel here, boy. Lovely. Also, the added bonus, uh, I'm not sure yet, but I may be able to clear uh, the northern part of uh, France without going in. I was going to stop and see my cousin who's got his boat over there, 
but it, it's it's a bit pro it's problematic to go in to, to France. It's a it's a difficult coast. I'm going to be tired. Um, I'm thinking of maybe 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 I could just carry on. Oh, 6.7. Wow. 6.6. Trying to get the seven knots here. I'm thinking maybe I could carry on into the English Channel. There's a storm up there, and I hope that's gone out of the way by the time I get there. Then I could be in the pub in Plymouth uh, by Saturday. So we'll see on that one. Whoa! 6.6. That's a record. 6.7. Come on, Shadow! Give me the seven. We want seven knots. Come on. Come on, baby. Come on. Give it to Daddy. Ah, oh, no. Nice big Atlantic boulders coming in. The day is still uh, reasonably young. I've got tonight to go through again. I hate the nights. They're long and at this, at this altitude, they're, at this uh, part of the world, they're, they're quite cold as well. Can we do it? Come on, Shadow! Come on, baby! Come on! Oh, he's a beauty! Oh, come on! It's the morning of the fourth day. Um, things have deteriorated quite rapidly. Uh, yesterday, uh, I took some clips on the action cam uh, of what it's like out there. Um, we're in, a, in the teeth of a gale at the moment, which doesn't seem to want to go. My face is completely windburnt. Um, I was all day on the helm because I couldn't get the self-steering to work properly. <laughs> the place is a mess. Um, I'm about 100 miles, 120 miles to the French shore. And even if I was closer, I don't think I want to risk going in. The French coast is renowned for its rocks and difficult entrances and uh, this wind is from the south straight into those entrances or across them um, so I'm more inclined just to stay at sea. I, I lay um, a hull last night, I took all the sails down, only had the small front one up, and up anyway and just risked not getting hit. Uh, this morning there's fog so I need to move because I, I stand a good chance of getting hit by somebody. Uh, people are not going to see me here. Uh, luckily, there's not much traffic around this area, but that doesn't mean that I won't get hit. I'm getting hit by some big ass waves. I'm just trying to get a cup of coffee on the go. And this is this is the scene outside. Uh, I'm under the bimini, so you can't hear the wind noise. Uh, I think it's come down a bit from last night. One yesterday that turned the boat, hit the boat so hard it spun the boat. And I've had one of those this morning as well. That's frightening. It sounds like an explosion and a hammer blow on the, on the boat. Bang! And a pull! Uh, yeah, right. I've got to put the camera down and, uh, and get back to real life and make sure that I'm safe and the boat is safe. So that's what we're going to do now. First cup of coffee. It's calmed down. There's still white horses out there. We're still in some swell. We're still in big seas. But we are 100 miles off and this is the Atlantic. So hey ho. I thought I really broke the mast at one point. I'm having trouble getting the boat to steer itself uh, when I'm not on the helm in certain conditions. And I was tending something and the boat changed a position uh, and direction and the wind came on the other side of the mast and it, it, it whacked the boom over, big style. Um, well, a hell of a bang. I, I don't think I've done any damage. I hope not. Nothing's fallen down yet. Touch wood. Um, you can see I'm dressed for winter. It's getting that time of year. Well, it's not getting that time of year. It's getting that time of place. I'm in the, getting in the northern hemispheres. Uh, you can hear I've got a throat infection or something's going on, which is very weird because I couldn't have caught off anybody I'm in the middle of the sea. So I don't know what's happening there. Right, let's go up on the deck and take a, and take a look. I won't take the camera outside of the Bimini because it's it's uh, got a very fine spray at the moment. I don't want to get it on the camera. But the only thing you can say against that is that it, it is June. It's it's uh, June now, yeah. Um, 
and uh, we've had three uh, weeks, it was 20 days of wind in um, Karaminos that it just didn't stop. Three weeks, 20 days, it didn't stop. Uh, the winter before, uh, during the winter in Alvor, as you know from the, the other videos, I was always moaning about the weather, the winds, the cold, and the winter before, well, that, the same part of that winter, but earlier, uh, when I was in uh, Plymouth, working with the lifeboats, it just, it just seemed that there was a storm after storm after storm. Well, that was the winter before, actually. I'm losing track now. But it just seems to be the thing these days that getting a lot of big windy weather coming around. It's warm. I mean, it's cold. It's coldish now, but it has been quite warm breezes with these with these high winds. Not very pleasant. Not not good sailing weather. And uh, to be honest with you, I've had a hard time keeping my morale up. Um, I got scared by a couple of big bangs with the uh, with the sails and things, and a few mistakes I made. So as I get tired and fatigued, I'm less. I'm getting finding it less likely to push myself and to put more sail up and to try and get more speed. I'm just happy just to chill and take it easy, which means I'll be out here longer. I'm spending another night out in the sea again tonight, which is is risky. Um, um, but I'm just very tired. I'm very tired. Oh, as my friend, there's all strapped up on the back of the boat. And they were not new, but they were they were in a lot better condition than that at the beginning of the the season. Um, you can see there and the covers brought on. That's from constant rubbish of uh, uh, a lot of use in a lot of storms and tied to lots of marinas for lots of days. So those guys are doing me well, standing proud there. And we got some fresh water, some gasoline there. Uh, it's good old hydro vein doing his job. Yeah, so um, there's my <laughs> that's that's what I call my piss bucket. Yeah, that's the old piss bucket. Um, just to be crude for a minute, back in the old gung ho days when I was younger, you just stand up on the edge of the boat and do your stuff over the side. But you know, I'm by myself here. Um, I have a life jacket on when it gets rough and always when I leave the cockpit I have a life jacket and a lifeline on. And what I don't do anymore is stand on the edge of a boat and uh, pee in the water. Um, I heard they, you know, it's not uncommon to find men drowned in the water with their, with their uh, penises hanging out and that's basically because they were taking a pee and fell off uh, the boat, which I can believe. Uh, I do know it's different for women, of course, but I do know one or two that, that hang off a boat in a certain way and do it. Um, but but because you don't want to use the toilet, basically downstairs, it's a bit horrible. It's a bit confined in there, especially if the boat's rolling about, rolling about. So what I I've got a bucket, and I bring the bucket in board and uh, do what I need to do here, and then chuck the contents over the side. It's safe. You're staying inside the cockpit. It's 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 a safety thing more than anything else. Um, and play, you don't you don't want to be down there when the boat's rolling. It's horrible. I just thought I'd tell you, this <laughs> piss bucket. You've got to have one. A couple of other things in the uh, cockpit. Here's the uh, instrument pod. It's got a bit of um, got a bit of tape around it because uh, I had some problems and it was taken in water. Come around here and there's the back of the compass. And for some reason, the water uh, it's got well, liquid in there. That the compass road, the compass unit floats in, has turned yellow. Uh, it looks bad. It looks like it's come out of the pee bucket. It's disgusting. So it's it's horrible. When you turn the light on, there's a light for night time sailing, and you can hardly see anything. So that needs to be replaced. Most of what's on the boat is sort of rigged for being at sea at the moment, and, and that's all put away. That that uh, has a generator in it, uh, which would normally be out, but is stowed for voyage. Uh, on top of it is the life raft. Uh, that sits there in case of uh, anything nasty happening. It can uh, easily be accessed and uh, thrown over the side of the boat. A few years back I did a sea survival course and I had to spend 45 minutes in a life raft. 
it was in a pool indoors but it was designed to um, simulate sea, sea conditions it had a big wave machine it was pitch black and uh, they had big fire hoses pouring cold water on us and uh, after 40 minutes I can tell you it was pretty horrible small life raft with uh, six guys in and uh, I was not feeling very good at all <laughs> uh, yeah so you don't want to ever get in a life raft unless you actually have to there's a, a race that we have here over in the British Isles called the Fastnet race and there was one that went bad uh, quite a few years ago now and uh, some people lost their lives I can't remember the facts and the figures but basically um, there were too many too many people abandoned their boats before they needed to uh, because of the light of day when the storm had gone by and uh, they saw that what was left there were most of the boats that had been abandoned were still afloat and you stand a better chance if you stay with your yacht so uh, anyway I hope it never comes to anything like that with this um, yeah it's settling down now so we'll see what happens tonight anyway more nightmares here we go here's the story 45 miles I've got to go back there are no words it's just mad it's, and I'm steering with that at the moment so that's what's going to get us back to Britain one of the other casualties of the recent storms is a tall set and I put a lot of stops on there to try and hold it from ripping further so uh, it's sort of uh, ending as it started really I've got a couple more bruises <laughs> and my voice is almost gone.